Alita Battle Angel, rightly being touted as one of the best Hollywood adaptation of a manga or anime that's ever been made. But it still stumbles in all the same ways that most Japanese live-action anime adaptations do as well. It feels like they were trying to cram everything in the kitchen sink from the source material into this film all at once without ever stopping to think about whether it makes for good storytelling to do so. Despite there clearly being a lot of thought, creativity, and effort put into the film's lore, backstory, and especially its visuals, which look spectacular, everything about this world just seems extremely convenient. The movie does that thing a lot of video games do, where Alita just seamlessly fits into all these other characters' lives when she's introduced at the beginning like a puzzle piece, since everyone around her is inexplicably able to recognize that she's the main character. You are someone very special, not just a teenage girl. Within the first five minutes, you have Christoph Waltz find and rebuild Alita, then she goes outside for the first time and immediately meets Love Interest Dude, who in turn immediately guesses that she was built by Christoph Waltz, because I guess he's the only notable cyborg technician in this society that seems to revolve entirely around cyborgs. Then Alita asks Christoph Waltz about Love Interest Dude, and Christoph just says, Oh, that's the Love Interest. He's a scoundrel with a heart of gold, but don't you go hang around with him, I disapprove for some reason. Also, make sure to stay away from Mahershala Ali. I'm pretty sure he is the bad guy. It's a setup, you gotta get out of there. Returning to my video game analogy, Christoph Waltz's character kind of reminded me in this film of that one NPC who you keep going back to talk to for a hint when you can't figure out what you're supposed to do next. There are three or four scenes in the movie where he incrementally reveals more and more exposition as the plot demands, and it all feels so contrived. Every single character is a walking stereotype type that you've seen in various movies, TV shows, and video games before this, and none of them really ever rises above the bare bones. The only character whose story I found even remotely interesting was Love Interest Dude, but he is unfortunately played by the worst actor in the movie. That's what they want you to think. Then there's this whole subplot involving a made-up futuristic sport that's basically extreme rollerblading crossed with basketball, and everything about it was completely superfluous and unnecessary to the greater plot. It's clearly supposed to be an allegory for gladiatorial blood sports and is meant to be saying something about class disparity, which is more or less what the movie is about, so kudos for at least trying to tie it in, but these scenes just drop in and out of the film at random, like an optional minigame you have to play a few times if you want to get the good ending. There there are like three and a half action scenes revolving around this sport, and every time one of them started I kept having flashbacks to the pod racing segment from Phantom Menace. It isn't that bad, but it has the same problem in that the movie wants you to think it's important when in reality it's just a distraction and the entire thing could have been removed with very minimal rewrites. In my opinion, this sport should either have been cut from the film or it should have been the focus of the entire plot of the film. As it stands, it's basically just there to fill time and help buff out the movie's action quota. Like if they tried to make a Harry Potter movie that actually crams in all four Quidditch matches from the book. The bulk of this film revolves around Alita attempting to rediscover her past and learning who she is, but these rollerball segments have very little to do with that story. I don't know what I am. I do. You have the most advanced weapon ever. This would be just fine if the story had more time to play out in a different medium, like, say, a comic series or a television show. But it just didn't work for me in the short amount of time that a film allows. Most of the visual effects are pretty sweet. Some are really amazing, in fact, and a lot of it's extremely creative and unique, but all the greatest visuals in the world are meaningless if I don't care about the story or characters, which I didn't. The big feature effect, meanwhile, the titular character's huge anime eyes, was extremely hit or miss. Does it bother you that I'm not completely human? At the best of times, it looks pretty good, while at the worst of times, it looks positively creepy. But the thing that got me is that there's absolutely no reason whatsoever for this effect to be in the movie. Like, at all. Well, look at you. So anyway, Alita unlocks all the best upgrades in the game, including a sword that can cut through anything and an ancient indestructible body that's just been sitting around inside this super advanced derelict ship for 300 years undisturbed. For you see, the entrance of the ship is like 10 feet underwater, and nobody has ever bothered to put on some scuba gear and go explore it or attempt a salvage operation until now. What's that? Super advanced ancient lost technology from Mars? Ah, who needs it? Alita Battle Angel wasn't by any stretch the worst movie I've ever seen. If you're super into the source material or just action sci-fi in general, you'll probably get more out of it. A lot of people seem to be, but I was mostly just bored. But what did you think of Alita Battle Angel? Leave a comment down below, and if you liked the video, you'd be doing me a huge favor if you could hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on future releases. In the meantime, check out some of these other videos up here on my channel, and as always, thanks so much to all of you for watching, and take care. Cyber 6 Review coming next week, I promise.